hello students uh, today's topic is uh, an indeterminate structure basically we will discuss uh, the method of analysis for uh, uh, the propped cantilever beam as well as we will discuss the uh, method of analyzing and finding out the deflection bending moment shear force in case of a fixed beam uh, so let us start it is in continuation with the previous lecture uh, in which we have uh, studied some of the basic methods for analysis example unit load method consistent deformation method and slope deflection method so in this method uh, uh, we will be studying the some other methods of analysis for the indeterminate structure myself subhanshu jaiswal assistant professor at the university of lucknow now uh, in order to uh, start the analysis uh, we need to remember few equations uh, this is very basic equation that that says uh, moment, moment is uh, uh, that says uh, e v double dash that is uh, a double integration is equals to the moment ei v triple dash that is a triple ind integration that is equals to the uh, shear force and uh, the fourth integration is equals to the uh, load itself so we'll uh, see this uh, by using an example first of all this is a basic example for a prop cantilever beam and this question we are uh, concerned to determine the reaction shear forces bending moment slope and deflection for this prop cantilever beam this prop cantilever beam is having one end fixed at a other end is roller at b and the beam is carrying a, a udl of uh, intensity q throughout the beam uh, the number of internal reaction that will act in this case uh, will be uh, this ma this is a rotation that will be due to the fixed support uh, this vertical reaction ra due to the support condition as well as this vertical reaction rb due to the support condition at b so uh, let us start we'll start uh, solving uh, analyzing this uh, beam by using uh, equilibrium condition the first equilibrium condition says sigma v is equals to 0 that is sum of all the vertical forces should be equals to 0 so it says ra plus rb is equals to ql so this equation turns out to be like this this says ra plus rb is equals to ql so rb goes in to that side and the equation becomes ra is equals to ql minus rb now the other equation says uh, the uh, sigma m at any point should be equals to zero so sum of all the force uh, so moments towards any point uh, should become equals to zero this is a second equilibrium condition so let us take moment about a uh, sorry moment about b and uh, say it is uh, is equals to zero so sum of all the moments about b will be first moment will be this ma this moment will be ma second moment will be this uh, ql this ql is the force and the, the perpendicular distance will be l by 2 so this becomes ql square by 2 and the third is this uh, the third is this uh, uh, we can say this uh, uh, okay so let, let's not take about b let's take about a let's take about a so what will be the, uh, the moment about a it will be uh first will be this ma it is already a moment so it will not be multiplied by any perpendicular distance second is this ql uh this ql is the load and uh, the perpendicular distance will be l by 2 so total load total uh, this moment will be ql square by 2 third is this rb rb into perpendicular distance this is rb multiplied by l so this will be rbl so this equation turns out to be like this it says ma is equals to ql square by 2 minus rbl and uh, if everything goes to this side the equation becomes zero that is a uh, sigma ma is equals to oh sorry sigma yeah sigma ma is equals to zero so uh, now if we um, calculate uh, a simple moment about any section xx uh, at a distance uh, x from the end a the equation will be like this this says uh, mx this is the uh, moment upon any section this is mx is equals to ra 
multiplied by x this is the x the distance uh, uh, from the section minus ma ma will be as it is because it is a, a moment not a load so it will not be multiplied by any perpendicular distance minus ma minus qx square by 2 due to this load udl q uh, solving this will be uh, we can simply put the value of ra from here to into this and uh, we can get uh, the uh, modify this equation to be like this and uh, simply we have uh, uh, we uh, we have substituted the value of ma from this equation to this equation and we can uh, get the moment equation moment about uh, at any section x to be like this then if we proceed further uh, this says uh, we can simply uh, use this equation this says uh, uh, m is equals to uh, ei v double dash so we have calculated m over here and we know this relation that is m is equals to ei v double dash we'll simply put the value of m over here and we'll uh, solve the equation for the value this so it will be like this v ei v double dash will be is equals to m and the value of m that we have calculated over here sorry that we have calculated over here will substitute this value to this equation similarly if we integrate the, uh, this equation uh, the, if we uh, again integrate this equation this will be ei v dash and the equation will become like this this is a ql x square on integrating x we will get x square by 2 so it will be ql x square by 2 minus rb x square by 2 minus ql uh, square by 2 x minus rb x minus qx cube by 6 plus c1 this will be plus c1 this will be as it is because there was no x over there so it will be x x will come to this side and the c1 is constant due to the integration then again on integrating this equation we will simply get uh, qlx cube by 6 minus rbx cube by 6 minus ql square x square by 4 minus rblx square by 2 minus qx4 by 24 plus c1x plus c2 now if we apply boundary condition to the uh, uh, calculated integration equations uh, the quantum condition obviously says uh, v0 is equals to 0 okay uh, v0 uh, v dash 0 is equals to 0 and vl is equals to 0 so by applying boundary condition to this equation we uh, to both of the equation uh, the value of c1 and c2 can be calculated to be 0 then by putting this value in the equation the, uh, the value of rb comes out to be 3ql by 8 value of ra comes out to be 5ql by 8 the value of ma comes out to be ql square by 8 so these are the final reaction and moment values that we were concerned with uh, we were not known to neither ra nor rb nor uh, ma so we have finally calculated these things uh, now uh, next we will calculate the shear force so the shear force and bending moment about any section this is v uh, is the shear force at any section that is simply shear force at any section will be ra minus qx ra will be due to this and qx will be due to this udl so ra minus qx we have already calculated ra we'll substitute the value of ra from this equation to this equation and this will become 5 ql upon 8 minus qx now similarly moment again will be rax minus ma minus qx square by 2 Similarly, we'll put the value of RA in this equation, and uh, we can and uh, we have already calculated MA. So we'll put the both of the values in this equation, and this will be our uh, the, uh, the equation for the final moment and final shear force. Now, the maximum uh, shear force. If 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 we plot a, a bending moment uh, uh, diagram for this, uh, if we calculate, uh, sorry, if we plot a shear force diagram for it, it will be like this we have not okay so let it le, we have already calculated the shear force so let us uh, plot a bending moment diagram for it 
the bending moment diagram will be like this this will uh, this 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 portion is a, a positive moment and this portion is giving a negative moment so when we talk about the positive moment the highest peak is this point and over here the highest positive moment is 9q l square by 128 and when we talk about the negative moment this is the uh, highest peak and this gives the value of q l square by 8 so uh, the maximum uh, uh, shear force uh, will be uh, 5q l by 8 and obviously this is uh, the maximum shear force if we see here the maximum shear force will be at the at the fixed end and that is is equals to ra and the value of ra is 5 ql by 8 so maximum shear force will be equals to 5 ql by 8 that we have written over here at the fixed end similarly the maximum positive bending moment is this 9 ql square by 128 and the maximum negative is minus ql square by 8 now this in this way we have already we have calculated the maximum uh, positive and maximum negative bending moments also we have calculated the maximum shear force in this case uh, we have already calculated the uh, uh, the uh, unknowns that was ra uh, the ma also the rb so now we'll uh, we need to calculate uh, uh, the slope and deflections also in this case uh, basically by calculating all these things the analysis procedure will be completed so what is analysis procedure consists of finding out the reactions or unknowns uh, that uh, that has been asked uh, during the analysis process also if required uh, we need to draw the final bending moment and shear force diagram in order to clearly represent the uh, the uh, the, val uh, the values which we have calculated and show the variation uh, uh, from one end to other so in this way uh, we'll calculate now the slope and deflection of this beam uh, so v dash is equals to this equation gives the slope equation and uh, by integrating it again this will give a deflection equation so this equation is for slope and this equation is for deflection we'll simply apply the boundary conditions and calculate the slope and deflection final slope and deflection at any point so to determine the maximum slope for maximum slope we know v dash is equals to zero so simply in this case, we will uh, put the value of V dash is equals to zero and we'll calculate the maximum slope. The equation turns out to be like this. This is on putting V dash is equals to zero, this portion will become zero and this portion will become is equals to zero. So minus 6L square plus 15LX minus 8X square is equals to zero. The, this is equation for the maximum uh, deflection. So uh, we know that uh, x1 is equals to 0 uh, 0.5785 l so we'll put uh, the value over here and uh, the equation for uh, vx1 turns out to be like this so uh, this is the uh, for uh, condition for the maximum because uh, uh, we know that maximum will occur at so in this way we can calculate uh, uh, by uh, the slope deflection uh, by using this equation uh, uh, we can see that uh, uh, we have already uh, we have already seen that uh, this equation uh, will give at x1 is equals to uh, this value uh, this is a maximum value it, it will give the delta max is equals to like this uh, so uh, then again uh, uh, for the variation point if when m is equals to 0 then x will be is equals to 12 by 4 the slope at over there will be theta b and it will be y dash uh, at x is equals to l it will be uh, uh, ql q uh, upon 48 ei in this equation in this equation so uh, we can by using uh, the two of the equation at x is equals to any point for example we say at x is equals to one uh, this equation will give the value of slope and this equation Will give the value of deflection similarly by uh, uh, for any value of x we can simply calculate the uh, deflection and slope using uh, the two of the equation so uh, in this way we can uh, simply calculate all the uh, reactions uh, shear forces bending moments and the unknowns uh, uh, we have already calculated in this case we were concerned with uh, the reactions and we have calculated RARB 
Uh, we have a concern with the shear force bending moment. We have calculated. We have we were concerned with the slope and deflection. We have calculated. So in this way, we can do the analysis of prof cantilever beam. Uh, whatever parameters we are asked for, we can easily calculate using uh, this method. Uh, now let us see uh, one example of a fixed beam. Uh, in this case, this is a fixed beam. Uh, both end A and end B are fixed. Uh, this fixed beam uh, is uh, carrying a concentrated load P at the mid span. Uh, the span is uh, of L. Um, again, same over here also, we need to calculate the reaction, shear forces, bending moments, slopes, and deflection. So, in this case, uh, we can clearly see uh, that uh, there, there will be three forces at each end. One will be vertical, other will be horizontal, and third one will be uh, the moment. So, uh, this is a vertical force RA. Uh, the horizontal force will be HA over here and HB over here. Uh, we can clearly see that HA will cancel out HB because uh, the load is acting in the mid span. So, we can simply say HA is equal to HB is equal to zero. Uh, MA is the moment due to this fixed end. Also, MB uh, the moment due to this fixed end. So, uh, by using first equilibrium equation that is sigma of V is equal to zero, we can say RA plus RB is equal to P. RA plus RB is equal to P. So, we can simply say due to symmetry, it gives RA is equal to RB is equal to P by 2 due to the symmetry. This load will be distributed equally to each end. And we can clearly write down, uh, directly write down RA is equal to RB is equal to P by 2. Similarly, MA will be equal to MB in this case because this is a symmetrical beam. So, MA will also be uh, is equal to MB. Now, we need to calculate uh, a moment about any section, say X. And uh, the whose distance is uh, x from the uh, and a. So moment will be at will be uh, on this section will be uh, will be p x by two minus m a. P x by two. This is p multiplied by x by two minus m a. M a is the moment, and this will be from zero to l by two. This this is into this region. This is into this region. This is zero to l by two. Now. When we talk about uh, zero uh, uh, for this span, it will be px by 2 minus na uh, for 0 to l by 2. For the same thing, we will be we will be uh, putting this equation that is ei v double dash. And we know this equation that is ei v double dash is equals to m. So we'll simply calculate over here. Again, uh, after integrating in the same way we have done in the case of a prop cantilever beam, uh, ei. Uh, v dash is equal to uh, px square by 4. This equation we have uh, integrated it px square by 4 minus max plus c1. Again, integrating it, we'll get uh, px cube by 12 minus max square by 2 plus c1x plus c2. This is within the limit of 0 to l by 2. This is within the limit of 0 to l by 2 for one section. Then again, applying the boundary conditions, uh, V0 is equal to 0 and V-0 uh, dash zero will also be equal to 0. Uh, because this is a symmetrical condition, so uh, V-0 dash zero will be equal to 0. Here are the final forces, uh, this PL by 8, PL by 8, this is MA, this is MB, this P by 2, P by 2 is the RA and RB uh, due to this load P. Uh, so, in order to calculate uh, the C1 and C2. So, this is how we can uh, calculate uh, uh, the uh, uh, the value of uh, uh, V dash and V at any point using the, the both the equations. Um, we can see uh, the C1 and C2 can be calculated uh, in this way. C1 is equal to C2 is equal to 0. That we have uh, been calculating it using the both of uh, these equations by applying the boundary conditions. So, I'm um, putting the value of C1 and C2. The final MA will be equal to PL by 8, and this will be similar to the uh, in the equal to the MB because due to the symmetry, this MA will be equal to the MB. Now, uh, 
we can clearly see this uh, uh, the bending moment uh, for this thing it is uh, PLY8 maximum over here and uh, PLY8 maximum uh, negative over here this portion is giving the maximum positive bending moment and this portion is giving the maximum uh, negative bending moment so maximum positive bending moment will, will be uh, this one sorry this one and maximum negative will be this one so due to symmetry we can easily see the plot is also symmetrical it is uh, the varies from uh, this point to this point in a linear way also from this point to this point in a very linear way and the graph area is uh, symmetric uh, at both the uh, parts so the shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, are, uh, are this this is a, a bending moment diagram now we uh, need to calculate slope and deflection uh, in the similar way we have calculated in the case of a prop cantilever beam so in this way uh, v dash becomes equal to is equal to this is a equation for slope again uh, that is minus px upon ati uh, l minus 2x uh, for 0 to l by 2 again on integrating this thing we'll get uh, minus px square upon 40 adi uh, 3l minus 4x uh, uh, this is uh, again uh, as uh, in the in the previous case uh, we have seen this is a, a slope equation and this is a deflection equation so uh, this this the, uh, on putting various uh, values of x uh, in uh, slope as well as deflection equation we can easily calculate uh, slope both slope and deflection for the uh, further cases now maximum deflection that is del max is equals to minus will be occur at l by 2 this is the maximum deflection that will occur at l by 2 we can easily see uh, on applying the this force is acting uh, on a length l by 2 so when the, the deformation of this beam will occur the deformation shape will be like this you can easily see if the deformation of uh, this beam occur because deformation and deflection of end support will be uh, zero deflection of uh, end support b will be zero so obviously uh, because there is a fix at both ends so it will not be able to deflect uh, from the ends so on the application of downward load b uh, p at the mid span the deflection curve for this beam will be somewhere like this and uh, this will be the maximum deflection and this the maximum deflection will occur under load and uh, the load is acting uh, at a distance l by 2 so we can clearly see that uh, uh, del max will be at l by 2 so we can clearly see in this case also ki, uh, the del max will uh, will be maximum at the center uh, because the ends are uh, fixed so they will not be able to deform uh, though the the certain rotation will be there so rotation we can uh, clearly see uh, if this is a rotation uh, this is uh, theta a this is a rotation this is say theta b uh, whereas this is a deflection we can say delta c or delta max because uh, the maximum deflection is occurring on the center itself so uh, this is how we can clearly see how we can uh, 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 find out where uh, the maximum deflection occurs in this case it is at uh, the center so we have easily calculated now in this way delta max will be at center and uh, on putting the value of uh, l by 2 uh, over here it will give p l cube by 3 uh, in place of x we will be putting the value l by 2 so on putting the value v dash will be uh, this is a uh, this is a v dash will be is equals to p l cube upon 192 ei and this is a uh, maximum deflection that is uh, sorry in this case because this is a slope equation and this is a uh, deflection equation so deflection on putting the value of uh, uh, l by 2 in the deflection equation we'll get simply a deflection at l by 2 and we know the maximum deflection occurs at 
a distance l by 2 from each end so this will become pl cube upon 192 ei similarly the point of inflection occurs uh, at the point where m is equal to 0 obviously uh, the point where m is equal to 0 the point of inflection so point of inflection will be uh, where the uh, moment is 0 so uh, moment is 0 at the center so it will be at l by 2 as uh, so we can see uh, the point of inflection uh, is a uh, uh, Moment is zero. Uh, that is at x is equal to 12 by 4. The reflection is okay. So moment is zero, and uh, x is equal to 12 by 4. We need to calculate uh, uh, the point of uh, inflection over here. That is uh, at l by 4. So at l by 4 again, instead of this value l by 2, we'll put the as uh, x is equal to l by 4. And at x is equal to 12 by 4, it will be PL cube upon 384 ei. And uh, which is equals to del max by two. Because obviously, we can see the variation is linear from this end to this end, and uh, the deflection at this part uh, will be uh, just half of the deflection at the center part, and also the deflection at this part will be half of the deflection at the center part, and it goes to uh, uh, a negligible amount, or we can simply say zero uh, to the end A as well as end B. Uh, so in this way, we can uh, clearly see that uh, we have calculated the deflections uh, also the slope uh, for a fixed beam also remember one thing we can uh, we need to see uh, also in this case uh, as well as in the case of the prop cantilever beams uh, when we calculate the shear forces uh, also the bending moments uh, we need to calculate uh, the reactions first because uh, uh, when all the reactions are known to us, similarly, in this case, uh, as we can see, this is a basically indeterminate beam. So in this indeterminate beam, there, is, there are three uh, support reactions over here. There are three support reactions over here. Uh, three support reactions are over here. So uh, the basic uh, uh, indeterminacy of, in this case is, uh, uh, three, uh, we can clearly see uh, at this end, the number of internal reactions are three. Also at this end, the number of internal reactions are uh, three. So we just need to calculate uh, it like this. Total number of reactions are six. And uh, six minus the uh, equilibrium conditions and equilibrium condition for 2D frame is uh, three. So total number of uh, indeterminacy in this case is three. So basically we can clearly see that uh, three extra equations are there. Uh, hence we need to uh, calculate the unknowns. And uh, in this case, unknown is uh, HA, HP, uh, also this MA and MB. So in order to calculate uh, the unknowns, we need to uh, do this procedure uh, in which we can clearly see if, if this if, and uh, uh, this case was a case of a symmetrical beam. Uh, also, if uh, this case uh, was of a unsymmetrical beam, we can clearly see like this. Uh, due to symmetry, uh, these all things happens. Due to symmetry, uh, this thing uh, happens like this. Just a second. Due to symmetry, this HA was equals to HB. Also, this MA was equals to MB. But if the case wasn't like this, if this would have been a case, this load P was acting like this, this end was fixed. Also this end was fixed. Then uh, this uh, distance would have been say A and this would have been B. Then in this case, uh, this MA uh, uh, was, will not be equals to MB because moment at this part uh, will be different as the moment in this part. So uh, also the HA will not be equals to HB. So th this was a case of a uh, symmetrical beam, uh, but in case of unsymmetrical beam, 
the condition will not be like this so in, in those cases we need to uh, uh, solve this equation more precisely in order to calculate the all the unknowns uh, 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 reaction and we'll discuss the, the procedure uh, in a very uh, descriptive way in the upcoming uh, lectures where we'll, we, we will be dealing with uh, the more specific uh, methods of finding deflection for example slope deflection method uh, for example uh, uh, moment distribution method uh, uh, matrix method of uh, analysis of a structure we will be dealing in more precise way uh, for the analysis of uh, more complex beam and frames uh, so in the upcoming lectures we will be uh, uh, dealing with the, uh, the specific methods of analysis of indeterminate structure. Uh, uh, this was a basic understanding about how we uh, uh, analyze a structure. What is what does analysis means? Uh, what what parts are included in the analysis of a structure? Uh, so till then, thank you, class. Uh, thank you.